Hi everyone, welcome back to Feeding Raven Doodles, a pet parent's guide to nutrition. Today's topic is byproducts and meat meal. Now, many of us have heard these terms before, but we might be confused as to what their actual definition is because the common definitions of these terms are ever changing and they differ very greatly from their legal definitions that are set out by the Association of American Feed Control Officials, also known as AFCO. Many people wonder what they are, wonder why they're in pet foods, and wonder if they're even healthy for our pets. Uh, for some, they have a negative connotation, and um, they think that byproducts in meat meal actually are low quality or provide poor nutrition. Pet food companies certainly market to our fears, and they have created products that have no meat and bone meal, or they are free from byproducts. And because of this, many pet parents think that it's necessary to avoid products that contain these ingredients. Um, but I'm actually here to tell you that that's not necessary. And I'm going to answer a bunch of questions uh, relating to meat meal, byproducts, um, the processes that go into making these ingredients, and any additional questions that you might have. I'm hoping to cover them in this video. Meat is defined by AFCO as the clean flesh derived from slaughtered mammals and is limited to that part of the striate muscle which is skeletal or that part which is found in the tongue, in the diaphragm, in the heart, or in the esophagus with or without the accompanying and overlying fat and portions of the skin, sinew, nerve, and blood vessels which normally accompany the flesh. In short, meat is just the skeletal muscle of mammals. It doesn't contain bone, internal organs, hair, hooves, or horns. The simple term meat can be used to describe the skeletal muscle that is found on cattle, sheep, goats, or pigs. If the meat comes from a different source other than these four animals, the species has to be disclosed on the label. Another form of what we call meat would be poultry. So AFCO defines poultry as the clean combination of flesh and skin with or without accompanying bone derived from the parts or whole carcasses of poultry, or a combination thereof, exclusive of feathers, heads, feet, and entrails. So poultry, unlike mammalian meat, may include bones, but it doesn't include heads, beaks, feathers, internal organs, or feet. Byproducts are defined by AFCO as secondary products that are produced in addition to a principal product. A principal product is what the animal was intentionally and initially slaughtered for. Usually for food production animals, this is meat or poultry for human consumption. So therefore, a byproduct is anything that doesn't fall under the definition of meat or poultry. So technically, things like leather, hair, and hooves are byproducts but they're used for non-food purposes. So uh, they can create things like textiles, paintbrushes, glue, among many other things. So here's where it gets tricky. AFCO's definition of byproducts that can be used in animal feed uh, becomes a little more specific um, than the common term of byproducts. AFCO defines meat byproducts as the non-rendered clean parts other than meat derived from slaughtered mammals. It includes, but is not limited to, lungs, spleen, kidneys, brain, livers, blood, bone, partially defatted low temperature fatty tissue, and stomachs and intestines freed of their contents. It does not include hair, horns, teeth, and hooves. AFCO defines poultry byproducts as non-rendered clean parts of carcasses of slaughtered poultry, such as heads, feet, and viscera, free from fecal content and foreign matter, except in such trace amounts as may occur unavoidably in good factory practice. Generally, byproducts are just those nutrient-dense internal organ meats of animals. AFCO defines meat meal as rendered product from mammal tissues, exclusive of any added blood, hair, hoof, horn, hide trimmings, manure, stomach and rumen contents, except in such amounts as may occur unavoidably in good processing practices. Rendering is a type of complex cooking process with many steps in which animal tissues are heated to extreme temperatures and then separated out into nutrients. So fat, 
Protein, minerals, and moisture are the main nutrients that the rendered product is separated out into. Rendered animal products can be used to create a variety of different ingredients, such as meat meal, which is going to include mostly protein, bone meal, which is going to include mostly minerals, and tallow or lard, which is going to include fat. So rendered products are extremely concentrated sources of nutrients because they lack water. Animal or poultry byproduct meal is simply rendered byproducts. Again, it's going to include very concentrated nutrition. Fillers is a term that is used to describe certain ingredients in a pet food. Most people use the term fillers to describe sources of fiber or carbohydrates, but some people also throw byproducts and meat meal in under the definition of fillers as well. Most people use the term fillers to demonize certain ingredients because they believe that fillers are poor sources of nutrition or they're very low quality. However, AFCO has not defined the term fillers, so they have no official or legal definition. Byproducts and meat meal are actually not fillers by any sense of the word. Under no definition would they be considered fillers because they provide very concentrated sources of nutrition that are essential to be in your pet's diet. Byproducts like organ meats might sound really unappetizing to most Americans, but they're actually eaten by humans in other countries and considered delicacies. Byproducts are going to be packed with nutrients and they're going to be very healthy for you if you eat them in the right amounts. They provide pets with a source of nutrition from animal tissues other than skeletal muscle meat. Rendering might sound disgusting, but it's essential to create an edible product from an otherwise inedible animal tissue. Rendering is going to create those concentrated meat and bone meals that are packed with nutrients. Remember the definitions and the difference between nutrients and ingredients. Nutrients are essential components of your pet's diet that they need to live such as protein, fat, fiber, minerals, vitamins, and moisture, among many other things. Ingredients are simply the source of these nutrients. So just because a nutrient comes from an ingredient that might seem unappetizing to you, doesn't mean it's any less healthy. Muscle meats are actually deficient in many nutrients and contain unbalanced nutrition. So feeding a pet a diet that's exclusively made of skeletal muscle meat can actually be very detrimental to his health because he's going to require many nutrients that are not found in skeletal muscle. Byproducts and meat meal can help round out and balance out that pet's diet because they provide additional nutrients that aren't found in skeletal muscle meat. Meat meal is especially good for balancing out diets because it's so concentrated. So a tiny serving of meat meal can provide more nutrition than skeletal muscle meat or byproducts can. Meat meal and byproducts are also less expensive forms of nutrition because there's no market competition for them. Because they are considered undesirable for human consumption, pet food companies can get these ingredients for much cheaper, saving you money. We need a market for these ingredients because otherwise they would be disposed of in a landfill or buried or burned. So that contributes to a lot of environmental contamination and waste. So using these products is actually a great form of recycling. There's a lot of hype behind the misguided theory that commercial pet foods, especially kibbles, are chock full of the four Ds. The four Ds is a term that's used to describe animals that are dead, dying, diseased, disabled, or down. Per the FDA, any animal that dies from a cause other than slaughter is considered adulterated and it's not directly suitable for use in animal food. Usually this includes animals that died from natural causes or disease. However, these animals may be used for animal feed if they don't contain chemicals and if they have been heat treated, aka rendered, to kill off any disease causing microorganisms. Again, remember the difference between nutrients and ingredients. Once the tissues have been rendered, 
they are now nutrients. As long as these products do not contain any disease-causing microorganisms like bacteria, parasites, or viruses, they are safe for your pet to eat. Pets' GI tracts or gastrointestinal systems don't care where the nutrients came from. All they care about is if they can digest and utilize these nutrients. Reliable and trustworthy manufacturers will have a good relationship with the suppliers of their ingredients. So they will know exactly where their meat and bone meal or their byproducts come from, and they'll have regulations and safeguards in place to make sure that they're coming from a safe place. If you have any questions, most certainly call and ask your pet food manufacturer and see if they know where their ingredients are coming from and ask them what kind of safeguards they have in place. You can also check out How to Pick a Pet Food Part 1 for more information. It is nearly impossible and absolutely unnecessary to avoid byproducts in meat meal. They are packed with nutrition and provide excellent balance to pet foods. Some manufacturers or other entities might try to convince you that byproducts in meat meal are unhealthy or they provide inferior sources of nutrition. So if you hear this from a manufacturer, that's a big red flag because they're using fear-based marketing to sell their superior product to you. Almost all pet foods contain byproducts or meat meal. They just might use some more appealing terminology. So a manufacturer might say, hey, our food has no byproducts in it but in their ingredients, they actually list liver, spleen, and kidney. Those are byproducts. So they're simply using that buzzword byproducts to market to your, your fears. If you hear this from an outside entity, such as a pet food rating website or a self-proclaimed expert in pet foods who has no credentials, um, this is going to tell you that the person is ill-informed and you probably shouldn't listen to their unsubstantiated claims about byproducts in meat meal. Thanks so much for watching this popular topics video on byproducts in meat meal. I hope it cleared up any confusion you might have had about these ingredients. And check out the description below for all the references that I used to create this video as well as some additional reading material for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends, and leave any comments down below if you've got any additional questions for me, or if you have suggestions for future videos. Next time, we're going to be talking about another popular topic, fillers. Oh, say bye, Raven!